Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the 49th chapter of the book of Genesis. The very word Genesis first four letters, G-E-N-E, -E, gene, and, uh, you know, gene as in uh, DNA, gene as in generator, you know, uh, creation of power, right? It's appropriately named. All right, so number uh, Genesis Number chapter number 49. All right, starting in verse 1. And Jacob, now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. From what I understand, Jacob means supplanter, sort of like a trickster. Israel means prince of God or rules with God. So it's kind of interchangeable. And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So gather around, everybody. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the end times, the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Now, just a little note here. The firstborn was to be given a double portion. Okay? The firstborn was to be given a devil portion of the inheritance so that, well, he was to take care of the uh, parents so that when the parents finally passed, he would get uh, rewarded for that. Now, for those of you that uh, have a good idea of what happened in um, the garden with Eve, Cain would have been the firstborn. Think about that. And Esau would have been the firstborn. God didn't like Esau. I don't think God liked Cain either, but uh, the Bible specifically says that God hated Esau. So Reuben was the firstborn. Verse 4. Jacob writes about Reuben. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defiled thou it. He went up to my couch. Uh, Reuben had sex with uh, one of his father's, I, I, I'm not sure, concubines or... Maybe it was wife, you know. Uh, Israel should have been looking for a wife for his son. I don't know if this was forced or if she consented. I, you know, I don't know. They just, I don't think there's enough information. But um, it was uh, strictly against Bible law for a father and a son to be playing with the same woman if you catch my drift. Verse 5. All right, so Reuben's not, never going to amount to much. Verse 5. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Now remember, Levi was to be the tribe set aside for the Lord's service. First in the tabernacle, and then later in the temple. 
Uh, the book of Leviticus was written for as an instruction book specifically for the tribe of Levi. They were trained from a very young age, and uh, I don't even think they could be start being a priest until 25. And then they couldn't be a high priest until they were at least 30. So that tells you about 30 is when... Uh, usually takes between 25 and 30 years old before a male starts uh, maturing. Trust me, it's true. I know from personal experience. But uh, instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. My soul, O oh my soul, come not thou into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Uh, the Levites were... They were... Uh, pretty much they were scattered in Israel. Because they had, uh, you know, I guess they had s later synagogues all over. But the um, they had different places of uh, worship all over Israel. And then three times a year, they had to present themselves to in, into the uh, Jerusalem. But all the other times of the year, they would be all over Israel different places. For example, Bethel. Bethel actually means, Beth means house, and then El is a contraction for God. Some people think that uh, Spain, you know, Catholic Spain with all the priests, is uh, partly Levi. I don't know how true that is, but uh, think of the Spanish Inquisition. Instruments of cruelty. And if you look at the cities in Spain, a lot of them start with uh, E-L. So Bethel means house of God, E-L, as in Elohim. But if you look at Spanish words, uh, you've got L for male and then La for women. And perhaps you've heard of L. Alamein, uh, different cities, starts with an E-L, as in, you know, belongs to the Lord. That's kind of how I look at it. I don't know. Just something to do some further research if you're interested. Verse 8, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Rulership, people. Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. I know I've said that. Sound like a broken record, but... And... When it says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, well, what's the weakest part on a human body? The neck. Judah was considered um, the war tribe. A lot of people who are very scholarly believe that at least part of Judah is Germany. And some will argue with me and whatever, you know, but uh, the Assyrian Empire took part of Judah into captivity. They tried to take Jerusalem, but they couldn't do it because an angel, angel struck down 185,000 of their troops. But they took a large portion of Judah into captivity in addition to Israel, northern Israel. 
And then historians will trace back the migrations of Assyria into Germany. Which, if you ask me, uh, that seems to prove the point. Look at Old German script, or their Old German alphabet, and then take a look at Hebrew. I'm talking stuff written in the 1500s, 1400s, uh, the ancient way that the Germans would write their alphabet looks a lot like Hebrew. And I was in Germany probably for about a year in the army, maybe longer, a little longer, I don't know. But uh, when I I learned some German, which is comes in handy when you order want to order a beer or a sandwich, right, or dinner. And uh, when I started learning some Hebrew from Bible college, not a lot, but, you know, a little bit, I'd look up some words, I realized a lot of similarities there. Matter of fact, some of the words in Hebrew mean the same thing in German and English. English is probably about 20 to 25% German, believe it or not, and Latin. English has a lot of... Uh, came from a lot of different sources. So 20 to 25% German and 20 to 25% Latin. Uh, beer, anybody? Yeah. Beer, German. Verse, okay, thy children's father's children shall bow down before thee. Keep something in mind. Um, uh, Virtually all the royalty of Europe were of Germanic extraction. They were almost all of them. Even the King of England, um, King George the first and second, uh, back when America was fighting the revolution to get away from England, King George spoke German, not English. Can you imagine that? The King of England spoke German, not English. Really. You could look at all the German, uh, Germanic kings. Look it up. Germanic royalty in Europe. Google it. And you're going to find they were, uh, virtually all of them were Germans. The king of Russia, the Tsar, the king of Germany, the Kaiser, and the king of England in World War I were cousins. All three of them were related. Think about that. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah, verse 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. What's been the symbol of England and Germany? The lion. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the play, pray, my son, thou art gone, down, uh, gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rise, rouse him up? Verse 10, the scepter, we're going to cover what a scepter is. It's a uh, staff that is, uh, uh, shows an authority and rulership. I'm doing, a, I'm going to put the scepter in the slideshows. The, uh, have you ever seen a, the hammer or gavel? that a judge uses in the court, in a way, that's sort of like a scepter. It, it denotes power, authority, rulership. This, uh, but the difference between a scepter and a rod is a scepter is very ornate. Uh, it has ornamentation. It, has, uh, it might have symbols on it, whereas a rod or a staff, it doesn't. Uh, in, I think, Rome, the Roman emperor under Caesar, I think his uh, scepter had an eagle on it, if I remember correctly. Of course, it could have whatever the, the ruler at the time wanted. So it was a symbol of authority. Verse 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, rulership right nor a lawgiver from between his feet 
until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Now Shiloh, Shalom, and Salem, from the best that I can gather, all have reference from the same root word, meaning peace. Jerusalem, city of peace. Shalom means peace. Shiloh, every Bible authority that I would halfway respect, believes that Shiloh here has reference to Christ. And Christ is called the Prince of Peace. Remember? I hope you do. If you don't, you need to read your Bible. In Isaiah 9, 6, it, we read, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Yeah, if you listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll tell you, no, 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 that's wrong. He's just, a, he's just an angel. They, they think Jesus is Michael the angel. I don't think so. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Speaking of Christ, right? All right, so the ruling scepter shall not depart from Judah. What was Judah? Um, Joseph was of the tribe of Judah. Uh, I guess you could say the adoptive father of Christ. And it says, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Now, there were two sets of laws. There were the Levitical laws for the priests on how to serve the Lord, which we're going to do, a, I'm going to do a lot more on that coming up, uh, the tabernacle, and then later the temple. They had a very specified way of performing their duties in the temple or the tabernacle. And only, only the tribe of Levi was allowed in to do those specific, I guess, rituals, as you could say. However, the other laws, the laws of government, that fell upon the king. So, if there was a murder trial, the king would uh, pronounce the sentence. If it was a matter of burning a, a sheep, well, that went to the Levites. And it says, Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Who's going to gather the people and bring them back to the land? Oh, I know, Bob. The United Nations in 1948 in the Israeli state. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I, I definitely not. No, Christ is going to return the people to the land. We're going to be caught up together in the air to be with him when he's returning, and he's going to put his feet on the ground at the Mount of Olives. And if that doesn't happen, it's the wrong Messiah. Keep that in mind. No, we're going to be caught up to be with him in the air. I've covered that so many times, I just don't even want to go back there. But now we're going to, the gathering of the people is going to be the second coming, not before. 1948, United Nations Declaration. That's the counterfeit. And when you hear preachers telling you, oh, 1948, you know, know that you're listening to either a devil or somebody that was trained by the devils. Take your pick. All right, so, verse 11. Binding his foal unto the vine, and his ass's colt, unto the choice vine. Now remember, the vine was a symbol of Israel. And what about the ass's colt? Didn't Christ 
go into the Jerusalem on the ass's colt, the foal of an ass, when they took palm branches and straw the the uh, the road on his way in. Oh yeah, most certainly did. In Hosea chapter ten and verse one, Israel is an empty vine, no fruit. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself, not the Lord, right? According to the multitude of his fruit, he hath increased the altars, not the altars of the Lord, no, the altars of the devil. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. Jesus said in John 15, 1, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. In Jeremiah 2.21, Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant, a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? That don't sound good. Now in Zechariah, Z-E-C-H, Zechariah, not Zephaniah, I always get those two confused. 9.9. Nine, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Well, how about Matthew 21? Verse 1, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and there came to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. Bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, and we just read it, um, tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way, others cut down branches from the trees, and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before, and that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. All right, back to Genesis 49. So, verse 11, binding his foal unto the vine, his ass's colt unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Where do we find this at? Huh, let's take a look. All right, Matthew 26, verse 26. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So the cup, the cup of wine, for this is the blood of my New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So the wine represented his blood. All right, turn to Revelation 7 and verse 11. 7, 11. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell 
before the throne on their faces and worship God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? So, what are these? Who are these that are, you know, clothed in these white robes, right? What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Back to Genesis 49 and verse 11. Binding his foal into the vine, and his ass's colt unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Wow. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea. Some people think that Zebulun is the, uh, the Netherlands or Holland. Um, and he shall be for an haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar is a strong ass crouching down between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his soldiers to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse's horse heels so that his rider fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Dan. Uh, some people think that they were the descendants of the Vikings. Um, matter of fact, have you heard of Denmark? Well, that's not how they pronounce it. They pronounce it Denmark, the mark of Dan. Yeah, they even spell it D-A-N-M-A-R-K, the mark of Dan. You've heard of the mark of the beast? Well, this is the mark of Dan. A serpent, by the way. Denmark was the uh, porn capital of Europe back in the 70s. Some really vile stuff. Even as an unsaved uh, unbeliever, uh, they had some really vile stuff. Yeah, I was in a, you know, a serviceman and you know servicemen would leave stuff laying around and you'd see it there's yeah no thank you verse 19 gad a troop shall overcome him but he shall overcome at the last out of asher his bread shall be fat and he shall yield royal dainties naphtali is a hind let loose he giveth goodly words Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode in strength, and his arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Uh, isn't Jesus called the chief cornerstone? Oh, yeah. Now remember, Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And a lot of people think that uh, that refers to the United States and England. No arguments from me. Um, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd. Uh, what's Christ called? The shepherd, right? And uh, the stone of Israel. Verse 25, even by the God of thy father who shall help thee and by the Almighty who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessing 
of the deep that lieth under, blessing of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Who's known for wearing a crown? England, right? The kings, queens. Benjamin, Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Every one according to his blessing he blessed them. And he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for a possession of a burying place. And they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. Ah, oh, don't believe that Jesus is the shepherd? John 10, 11. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. All right, Ephesians 2.20, the cornerstone, right? And they and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. But if you listen to the Hebrew roots people, they'll tell you, oh, well, this is Paul. He's, he's a false apostle. Well, I guess Jesus Christ is not their chief cornerstone then. Uh, the Hebrew roots people that don't like Paul, yeah. 1 Peter 2.6 uh, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Isaiah 28.16 Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make Haste. All right. Acts 4.11. This is a stone which was set at naught of nothing, right? This is the stone that was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Mark 12.10. And have you not read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. Oh, yeah. All right, one last verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. All right, so this is the end. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.